Oh, Fuentes is crying to Adam saying he doesn't want me to be on the... <laughs> he doesn't want me to be on the next panel. Why would he care though? If he dominates the conversation so well. <laughs> Bro, this picture is just so like... It's like emblematic of Sneeko's entire life. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like the best picture. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Can you explain to me why the lover boy method is not infantilization of women. Oof. Oof. Ultra rare. Ultra rare. Reverse hollow foil BX bullet W. I just realized I can never tell you who I'm dating because then all these crazy ladies will try to get him to cheat his payback. Just deal with the cheating then. <laughs> Absolutely true and based. I want to talk about your blue hair. So there's like three different types of people in this world. You got the chads, which are ultra, ultra attractive and they're gonna get women no matter what. Then you have the uggos, which are gonna struggle for the rest of their life forever. And then you have the normies in the middle and you exist in the middle as kind of like a, just an average looking dude. When you get that blue hair, it, it, it lets <sighs> some women, it turns on some women. So it turns off some women, but the women, it turns on. It works super well. The same thing kind of happened with my red hair. Uh, it would either turn a woman off or turn a woman on. And it's kind of like a piece of exoticness that sets you apart. And um, I'm very, not excited. I'm not surprised that you say that it works to help you get chicks. Okay, cool. I don't know what I'm supposed to respond to that with, but all right. All right, all right, all right. How do you feel about the injunction against the US government to communicate with Twitter. Um, I don't know anything about it. Tell me about it. Um, a judge ruled on an injunction to prevent the US government from communicating with Twitter based on the Twitter files. Now you had those two journalists on that you kind of destroyed because the journalists refused to accept that Twitter did nothing wrong, but you kind of stayed away from the fact that the government did do something wrong because I don't know that if you view the government as doing something wrong, but this judge views the government as being inappropriate with its communications with tech giants. So they ordered an injunction. What is, I need to look this up, hold on. Okay. Injunction, government, <clears throat> Twitter. It might say social media giants instead of Twitter. Agents impacted include the CDC. Some your bleach for you, Chad L. L L L. Federal judges temporarily prohibited several U.S. government officials and agencies from conducting social media about content moderation, a setting a potential breach of the First Amendment. It's the latest moment in the messy dichotomy of administration. Preliminary. Okay, so it was a preliminary injunction granted on a Tuesday in a case brought by the attorneys general in Louisiana, Missouri, against a laundry list of officials and agencies in the Biden administration. And the defendants are accused of. Okay, so it looks like a preliminary temporary injunction. Yeah, so I view the Justice Department as still being pretty pretty sound. There's a lot of institutional rot in a lot of departments in this world. And I think the Justice Department still does pretty damn good at determining what, what is truth and coming out with good rulings. So if they ordered this injunction, they being this judge, uh, he saw something in that Twitter leaks that says that the government was acting inappropriately. So are you going to go against this judge's like mindset to stick to your own? Or is it a potential that you could be swayed that the government was inappropriate with how they were communicating? I mean, I could be it? swayed, but why would I change my opinion based on a preliminary injunction? Uh, because it comes from a point of an authority. It's a preliminary injunction. Like none of this case has even gone through yet. Why would I? A single uh, judge because... granted a preliminary injunction. No, that's like me saying, that would be like me saying like, uh, Tupac has drugs in his apartment. And I'm like, well, how do you know that? Well, because they had a search warrant. What you, why would a search warrant, like, well, in order to get a search warrant, they must have shown some sort of evidence to the judge that there must be something there. So they, and they've got a place and a manner of searching or whatever. Okay. But like, it's just a preliminary injunction. No, it could be the case that something wrong happened, but I would wait to see how the um, court proceedings go. Like, unless there's okay. some secret, you know. 
uh, yeah, just in your communications, you it seems like you were pivoting away from the government trying to trying to say that the government did something wrong and staying on the fact that Twitter didn't do anything wrong because Twitter as a private organization has a completely different set of rules than the government as a organization bound by the Constitution. I'm not I don't know as much for the rules and restrictions on the government in terms of communicating with private companies, but to my current understanding is they didn't do anything wrong no. But I mean maybe I mean in a court case maybe that could come out differently, but yeah, one of the things they requested Twitter remove a post and they were like, how come this post hasn't been removed? In the article, it says a bunch of the things that were cited as part of that injunction. And all of it seems like something inappropriate to me because I don't think the government wait, hold should on, wait, be wait, 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 hold on, wait, you gotta give, you have to give examples. You can't say ask for a post to be removed. What, like, we need, you need way more specificity on that. Mm, hold on. Give me just a second. Uh, I don't have it. There was a site I was referencing that had a bunch of the information, had a bunch of uh, literal quotes from the government and from Twitter. That oh, and apparently it. this injunction is even on hold right now, so. Oh. Okay. Next topic. Can you explain to me why the lover boy method is not infantilization of women? How is it infantilizing somebody? I'm from the future. This girl uh, is going to join. An adult woman who is 18 year old, years old should have the ability to have interactions how she chooses. And if she chooses to fall in love with the guy, move to his country, <clears throat> and then start doing what he tells her without the direct threat of violence or anything of that nature, and he's just purely manipulating her. It kind of leads to the idea that women are inferior because they can be manipulated by when by men, at least in my mind. Do you think that scammers shouldn't be held accountable for scamming people since the people that get scammed should know better? If the scammers, the people they're scamming should know better? Yeah, depends. like let's say for instance I contact grandma and I say, hey, I've got a kid, he's sick, can you please send me some money? He's a Nigerian prince. like. Should that guy get punished for scamming since the grandma should be smart enough to know that a Nigerian prince probably isn't going to contact her? Um, as long as the person they're scamming, uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about that one very much. Well, no, no, but, because it's, there's this weird thing that's like focused on like, people keep doing this with the sex trafficking shit. They go like, well, are we infantilizing? How are you infantilizing somebody for punishing a scammer? That's essentially what the sex trafficking thing is. As a guy said, I'll marry you, I love you, come be with me. And the person goes to be with me, and they don't want to marry them, they don't love them, they're just using them for sex work and then taking money from it. That's all it is, start, like start and stop. There's no infantilization there. Like, did the woman like consent to it? Well, no, the woman consented to going and being with a guy that said he was in love with her and wanted to marry her and then got conned into doing basically sex work. But I mean, that's the same as any scam. But I don't know why we would ever use this, like aren't you infantilizing the person by holding the scammer accountable? Technically, nobody should fall for almost any scam ever unless people are pulling your info from some third party site. But we would never say, like, are you infantilizing old people by holding scammers accountable? It doesn't make sense. Well, old people sometimes have diminished faculties, and mostly... It can be middle... Hold on, about. that's t such a... Okay, middle-aged people, any people, like anybody that gets scammed. You probably shouldn't get scammed, but you would still hold the scammer accountable. I, I see where you're going with that. I'm more going towards the line of the difference between treatment of male and female. Do you ever think the lover boy method could be used against a male? Um, yeah, theoretically it could. I don't see why not. Uh, theoretically, it can, but practically, do you think there's ever a situation where a man can be manipulated by a woman and it would hold up in court? Man manipulated by women for I mean, don't women gain? get in trouble? Well, for financial gain? Probably not, but that's because I don't think there's as big a market for, um, for men in, like, sex markets as there is for women. Uh, let's remove it from the sex market. Let's say. Well, that's the whole point. Like you only get tra the tr point about trafficking is to make money off the person. But if there's not a, as big a market for the person, then obviously no, right? That's why I'm saying get rid of the sex part. We are talking about now a Bangladeshi uh, slum, not slum lord, um, factory worker who has like 40 different factories in Bangladesh. Do you think if they trafficked men to work in these factories uh, through manipulation using the similar methods of the lover boy? Um, that 
any type of penalty would be happening. P possibly, sure. I mean, don't teachers get in trouble for seducing students when it's female teachers and male students? Like, that happens, no? Um, yeah, it has happened, but I think even in that, the, the, guy, the zeitgeist within <coughs> society is that it's far more serious one direction versus the other direction. I mean, I, I don't... Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's true. I, I, it's, listen, if you want to make the argument that, like, society is sexist, sure, but, I, like, I don't know, like, the specific thing about, like, trafficking, I don't know what, like... We can make a broader point that, like, sometimes um, men get in more trouble than women for sex crimes. I, I mean, I might agree with you. I don't know what the broader point is you're trying to make, though. Uh, just wondering if it's an infantilization of women, and in your opinion, it's 100% not an infantilization of women. And infantilization, that, uh, yeah, I would have to see what is the infantilizing part. The infantilizing part is the fact that uh, these women have cell phones on them at all times. If they want to leave, it seems like they all can. Specifically with the Tate situation. Not saying that the Tates are innocent or guilty or that I hold an opinion on the matter. Um, but it, it seems like those women all had cell phones at all times and had access to police uh, their families. My understanding is that one time when they tried to go to the police, the two ladies working with the Tates literally got those, like, police reports basically destroyed. Number one. Number two, I don't know if they all had cell phones on them at all times, because a lot of the stuff that's leaked shows that, like, the women can't leave the house unaccompanied, for instance. Um, it seems yeah. like cell phone privileges are things they had to earn by being loyal for some period of time. Um, three, we're back at this argument again, which I... I just don't know how to deal with it, where it seems like people think the only type of manipulation is locking somebody in a box, throwing them in a basement, and holding an AK-47 to their head. But I mean, there are plenty of no. other types, like prostitutes, every single prostitute is free to walk the streets. She could just walk to a police station, right? Like, so is pimping not real? Um. Like most women that are in abusive relationships could just leave their husband. Like they just like it's not like he's at home twenty four seven. They just walk out the door, take their kids, and leave. Fuck women. Usually people even go back to abusive relationships even once they are free. But even that, it seems like you're you're only talking about like a one way situation. Because like the women, I mean, it could happen the other way. But I mean, in this particular case, it's more often than not, it's going to be a, a man manipulating a woman because of the dynamics at play. Because men tend to be the main buyers of sex. It's not women, so it doesn't really make sense that there'd be women pimping men. There's probably not as much money to be made there. Or for abusive relationships, especially physically abusive ones, I'm sure there are guys that go back to abusive relationships, but for physically abusive relationships, typically men can exert a lot more physical power or pressure on a woman than a woman can over a man. But I don't think any of this is showing like a disparity in like sentencing or an unfairness in the system, just like some biological realities in terms of the differences in how we play out. Like on average, men probably get in trouble for hurting women more than women get in trouble for hurting men because men probably hurt women more because they do way more damage. Yeah, okay. So you're saying that mostly the lover boy method isn't a, an example of fanalizing women. It's just that in this particular instance, the target of this type of abuse is almost always women. I, I think because of how the other markets play out. Yeah, I don't know if, how, I don't know how much money you would make trying to traffic men. I mean, actually, I'm sure there are Probably young boys, right? Like, weren't boys on Epstein's Island or whatever? Yeah. So I didn't... Um, but I think... Yeah. I think there might be a slight different in viewing of young people because um, they haven't hit uh, puberty. So a child is kind of like almost universally a child. There's less difference between the two sexes. But once they hit puberty, then there's a big difference between the two sexes. Um, I, in general, that might be true, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for your opinion on that. What is your opinion on playing music as a kid? Do you think that all really good musicians have to have started as a child? No, I don't think so. But so much in really life works easier if you start as a child. I really don't think so. I started playing music at 21, and man, it was hard. And people I saw that played music that at least started at a younger age. Let's say they started music at like 6. Then they quit at 12, which is a lot of people do when they're forced to play music. And then they pick it up again later in life. Their progression is just night and day faster than mine. And yeah, I mean, you just have, life. you've got like so much more time to work and everything, right? Yeah. But like, you don't think that, you don't think that something changes in the brain at a young age when you learn music and music theory at like four or five? Nah, I don't think so. You don't think there's a permanent change? 
No, I don't think so. Can you name a musician who is famous and <coughs> talented that started after the age of 18? Um, I mean, I can go look up a list, but... This is saying when musicians became successful. Oh. Well, it's just talking about when they become successful later in life, not exactly when they started music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm of the opinion that when you start music as a child, uh, something changes in your brain to help you, like, because the way the brain works is like neural pathways burn almost like roadways into your brain. And when you start to learn music as a child, it's burning these roadways into your brain. And those roadways become almost permanent. And it's um, a lot Yeah, but I mean, you can start burning those in at later age too, right? I feel like every single thing we've learned as time has gone on about plasticity of the brain is that it's way more plastic through our later life than we initially thought. The idea that it's like only plastic in the very beginning and then it kind of like stops working. Like, I don't know if that's been the case. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I, could, I mean, you could go digging and looking for some, but... <laughs> I yeah, know. I went digging. And all, all the studies were very vague, and it's a social study, so social studies are not very scientific. Um, speaking on that, did you see the article about the fraudulent studies that went on, I think, at Stanford? Which... Uh, the, this female, uh, I think, professor faked a bunch of her data... And then four other people had to go through and like comb through all their data and find all the fake invalid data. Uh, I I don't know what it, this is about now. Oh, that, that could be interesting for you to go and take a look at. What 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 discipline was this? Uh, psychology, soft science. She was drawing big <laughs> why conclusions. It, why do you say soft science? Why does that matter? What? <laughs> it's a lot easier to manipulate soft science data versus hard science data. You understand that like one of the largest forms of data manipulation that came out recently had to do in the field of medicine with biology with the study of Alzheimer's disease, right? Like probably one of the uh, biggest scandals in like recent medical history and scientific history like had to do with research in biology or uh, medicine. But that's a, that's a difficult conversation because the research in pharmaceuticals and biology is almost a lot more uh, engineering than it is science. So it's almost like a soft science in itself. It's a little different. But what is not, not a soft science to you? Uh, aerospace engineering. Um, uh, Wait, how is aerospace not physics. engineering? Uh, no, aerospace engineering is a hard science. Oh. That, that's, a, that's a different conversation. We don't need to go there. Okay. That'll get confusing. Gotcha. All right. Do you think that the word racism has taken too many other words out of culture, like prejudice? Because I can be pretty prejudiced, but I have absolutely no racism. But it's almost impossible to describe my prejudice without being called a racist. I mean, racism is just like prejudice based on skin color, right? Yes, but what... So let's say I'm culturally prejudiced. What would be a way to communicate that I'm culturally prejudiced, but not racially prejudiced? I don't know. Say I don't like some culture? Yeah, but there's no way I'm going to be able to say... Uh, people that are born um, inside of the CCP, there's something off with them. And when they come over to the United States, they don't quite blend as well as other people. There's no way for me to say that without being viewed as a racist. Hey, I have no idea what that statement just meant. What? Okay. Um, you, don't, you, you live as a streamer, so you don't live in the corporate world. But in the corporate world, uh, we pull a lot of people from different countries over and then you have to work with them. So people from India, they're, they're great, they're hilarious, they're funny, they can like, kind of grasp American culture, right? But for some reason, when people from the CCP come over here, the, the humor and the ability to kind of grasp the culture, it kind of doesn't exist. It's, it's very odd, and I don't know what these people in the CCP are doing to their citizens, but I kind of feel bad for them. And there's no way to like have this conversation beyond looking like a complete racist. Don't, I mean, I, that's, <laughs> I don't know what your question is. Yeah, I mean like there might be some people who call you racist. I don't know what I could do about that. I don't know what world you're talking to or what you're appealing to. I, that's possible, I guess, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what I could say about that. 
Yeah, exactly. It, it's a uh, if you're looking for a difficult conversation, uh, and analyzing cultures and trying to have a conversation about cultures, removing the race behind the culture is a very difficult thing to do. And I feel that the word racism has kind of just taken all of the other definitions that are anywhere near the proximity of that word and just kind of pulled it into there. Sure. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, people have become overly broad with definitions of racism and stuff. I wouldn't deny that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, my dude. Uh, wait, wait. What map are you on on Triangle Strategy? Um, I think it's the one where we've got to kill the... Some guy's on a horse and he's got a cleric. We're outside of the his aunt walls, I think, and we baited the one dude to come out because he thinks Roland is going to come and backstab us, but he's not. Now that might actually be a different path. I didn't. I don't think I got well, that one. What's the Benedicto path? So, yeah, I yeah. got the Frederica, the simp path. Yeah, yeah, loser. All right, my man. Okay. I'll check you later. Have fun, bye. Am I still earning money from this factory while I'm over here at this factory? I hope you're not asking me how the f should I know. I ain't asking you, motherfucker. Where are you from? I'm from Mississippi. Oh, my good friend from the South. Hello. Yes. You're yes. really, really from Mississippi. Okay, what up? Um, can <clears throat> you tell me exactly, apparently, what you lost about on this, like, Fuente shit? Like, uh, why, how did he win so hard? What did you apparently not know? And I'm saying this because I listened to the whole thing fucking live. And I don't know if I, like, missed something. Or if, like, people just don't know, like how conspiracy shit works um there were some things i could have had better answers for um and like, they were just talking points i could have been more prepared like i could have better answers for like why like why does the united states like what does the united states get out of being friends with israel is a good thing to have a straight answer for i think um actually yeah, reading the clean break memo so i'm aware of because you know that would probably be good yeah there's always more stuff you can be prepared for i just find it okay so like all this like hoopla shit I guess me as a southern white male, uh, it's just as a Christian, I know like growing up, my mom always told me like the Jews are God's people. Yeah. So like basically, you know that shit. So it's kind of like you get that little sense in you. And then, um, I remember, I'm going to be jumping around. I remember at one point in my life, like basically like the whole Zerka spill shit all that shit he screams about that mm -hmm. like mixed in with like the Fuentes and like spewing how the Jews own everything like I remember like I found like all that info out like on YouTube like 10 years ago in a in a hotel when I was like snorting meth like like my, my thing is to believe just some of this shit like I don't know it's just I know like all those like conspiracy whack ass shit like Jews running shit. What was it? The the New World Elite. Um, everybody listening into you always. Kim trails. All this fucking shit. Like if you're just so woke, if you just know everything, and it can all get by on YouTube. Like, like, how does that not? And again, like I guess I was on drugs at the time, so that's why why I was just so like consumed in this shit. But I remember. I think it was like Trump was running at the time, because I wasn't into politics. I never really got into politics and shit until like I like right around I started listening to you. It was a little bit like right before, because I was like kind of like online like how do I like politic? But I remember I was watching like Alex Jones. It was like fucking when was it? 2016 or something. And I remember it was like some sh he was on the doing the info war stuff, and he was just like you know I can't believe I'm saying it, but uh you know. Trump is who we're backing. You know, Trump's going to be the next president. We need to back Trump. And I was just like, bro, what about the global elite? How is Trump not the global elite? And like, it like mind fucks me. It was just like, you understand what I'm saying? It was like, well, something doesn't add up. Something's not right. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't know. To see Nick spew on about his like political shit along with Zerka's fucking these bitches flat earth goddamn christ is king slay the demons fucking it's just like how does any reasonable person sit there 
Well, I don't even know why I'm asking this because nobody online, I guess, watching this shit is reasonable enough. Yeah, I mean, like, if I had to guess, like, I think what happens is usually somebody sees something from mainstream sources that they realize is not quite true, and then then they fall into a crowd of people that all push them to believe something else, and then they just start to slowly drift towards some crazier shit. If I had to guess, I think it's probably related to that, or that's like the path that people take. It's just I don't know. It's it's crazy to me. It's you you see all these people watching is supposed to be like, kind of like normie like can spot the bullshit people but then you got all these motherfuckers just all oh, you lost just oh, 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 and it's just fucking I don't know. and like i'm not trying to glaze i guess i am trying to glaze your pretty blue haired self but it's just fucking i don't know it's just cringe it's cringe yeah i mean i yeah, i agree but yeah true well thanks for letting me have my monthly therapy rant session yeah no problem um have fun stay safe be careful all right i'm gonna do hard drugs now okay. that was a joke by the way all right be careful buddy all right bye oh fuentes is crying to adam saying he doesn't want me to be on the <laughs> he doesn't want me to be on the next panel why would he care though if he dominates the conversation so well Wouldn't he want the opportunity to, to dominate me again? <clears throat> really makes you think, doesn't it? Frontez will never debate you again. Yeah, I know. I mean, I the first two times we ran into each other is I think like how conversations with him go. Actually, I guess the pattern repeated again too. Because the, the first time I debated him on like immigration and shit, I think it was like five years ago, he seemed really smart. But then I did research and I came back for the second time and he basically lied about everything. We had, we kind of did that 9-11 thing where him and Sneeko were joking about me spending like, what did I, I spent like three days researching the 9-11 um, documentary. And then when he was in my house, he didn't want to talk about it at all. And then he wanted to move on to like JFK shit. This is like the pattern of the conspiracy theorists is they want one time to show their shit, but then if you do any research afterwards, then um, then they just like, they don't want to have anything to do with you. That's basically, yeah. You're misremembering. I'm pretty sure Sneak was meant to be the 9/11 debate. Fuentes was meant to be the JFK debate. Nah, you guys try to rewrite history. Try that. I was there. Go rewatch the videos. Fuentes was keen on the 9/11 shit too. He just didn't expect me to spend three or four days fucking researching it. That's the biggest cope in the world. Is when he was like, "Oh no, I don't, I don't think I even want to talk about this." Blah blah blah. Even though Sneeko believes that 9/11 was a conspiracy, or I'm sorry, Fuentes believes that 9/11 is a conspiracy. He doesn't think any of that shit is real either. But as soon as he saw me doing the research, he didn't want to have the conversation. Right? That's always how it goes. How do you think Sneaker will reply to Nick ducking you? Well, he'll say that he should duck me probably for some reason, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. Ironically, that's also why Sneaker didn't want to fight Brandon. Wait, for what? Or how did that relate? <clears throat> why do people who believe in one conspiracy automatically have to believe in every other conspiracy theory? Um, usually... That's a good question. There's probably a lot of different reasons, but the type of person that would believe in one would probably also believe in others. Like there's a certain mentality for people that do believe in conspiracy theories. And um, if you're keen or likely to fall to one, you, then you're probably likely to fall to multiple. Are you the architect for Fuentes being in contact with all the red pills in the first place? No, the grippers were spamming Sneeko's chat a ton early on. Sneeko would have talked to Fuentes with or without me. Some people seem to have this idea that like I'm the one that connected all like Sneeko and Fuentes, but like the grippers were spamming the fuck out of his chat a lot in the beginning. He would have talked to him regardless of whether I did or didn't. <laughs> Bro, this picture is just so like, it's like emblematic of Sneeko's entire life. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like the best picture. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is such a good picture. <laughs>